Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 19 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. Happy New Year, everybody. This is the first podcast episode of the new year, and I am so excited to be here with you guys today. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host today. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but we do get up to other fibery topics from time to time, which makes this a very multifaceted community here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast, and that's exactly how I like it. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada. That is where I am from and where I live with my husband Brandon, our almost three-year-old son Angus, and our big fat house cat Oscar, and we are expecting a new little boy at the end of March. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the show today. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back episode after episode and supporting the podcast. If you are a new viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for checking this out. It is a really, really great growing community over here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast, and I am so thankful to have you with us today and in future future episodes to come. So thank you so much for checking out the channel. You can find me on Instagram. I am at wool needles hands. You can also find me at fiber.for.the.people. That is the Instagram linked to my hand dyed yarn business, Fiber for the People Yarn. You can visit the website, which is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com and check out all the yarny goodness over there. There is going to be a shop update tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So mark your calendars for that or definitely head over to the shop right now, sign up for the newsletter so you can be in the loop on all the things coming to Fiber for the People yarn. You can also join the Ravelry group for the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. Just head over to Ravelry, go to the groups tab and search Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast, and you can join the fun over there. It is a fast growing group of really awesome knitters and inspiring fiber enthusiasts who are sharing all the things that they're working on towards knit alongs that we have going on. You can join the group over there and get involved in the conversation or just be a part of the little community that we have going on over there. It's a lot of fun and it's super inspiring. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can definitely do so on Ravelry by sending me a direct message, or you can email me at the email for the Wool Needles Hands podcast, which is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. I am so excited to announce that we have surpassed 4,000 subscribers here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. I am floored every single time we make these big mile markers. Uh, it just, it, reinvigorates me and motivates me to continue this podcast as if I needed any motivation. I love doing this. It's just confirmation that this community is growing because of what we've created here. So I thank you guys so much for your subscriptions, for your support of the podcast. It means so much to me and it truly is what keeps this going. So thank you. We are actually almost... I almost want to say we're over 4,300 subscribers. It's It's been a little while since we hit 4,000. It was after I did my last podcast episode. So I'm just now getting to the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway. So I want to do a giveaway to celebrate this new milestone in the podcast. I have a really, really awesome prize for you guys for the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway. And before I tell you exactly what the prize is, I wanna share with you something that came to me in the mail from Greece, from the beautiful and talented Marilitsa of Spool Stories. If you guys haven't checked her out on Instagram, definitely check her out. It is at Spool Stories. She also has a website that is connected to her uh, project bag business that she has, and it is www.spoolstories.com. She sent me a little package of a couple of amazing project bags and so I'm going to share these with you guys right now and then there's also one that I'm going to be including in this giveaway so without further ado and I have stuff in this one so it's kind of weighing it down a little bit these are the amazing project bags that are created by Marilitsa of Spool Stories so here is the first one and it is gorgeous it, this fabric that she's using here is so delicate, so beautiful and lovely, and I love the contrast with the green and white polka dots. It's really very beautiful. So this is a drawstring project bag with a box bottom. It is really nice and um, it's not as sturdy or rigid as some of your like waxed canvas bags or even just a canvas bag but it's really nice because it is sturdy there are um it's it's has interfacing in there it is lined it's but it's still nice and soft it can be squished down if you're packing it to take it on a trip it's really really very nice um i love the inside though this is where i get really excited because she has such attention to detail when it comes to her bags not only is this just insanely well made um, it really is beautiful. The stitches are perfect. Everything is just put together so beautifully. But the inside, there are pockets in here. Not only does she have her little Spool Stories um, tag on the inside, which you can see right here, 
It is so sweet. I love, I love these little details. But it has pockets. It has this one really nice pocket here so you can slip your tools in there, you can slip your pattern in there, what have you. And then she also included a little sachet of, and I'm not even really sure, it smells like lavender to me. So it, sound, it smells like it's just kind of a lavender sachet that she put into the project bag to go in, uh, with your projects to keep them fresh. It's just really thoughtful little details like that. And then she also included a little pouch for your notions with a cool star print fabric, just a little button pouch. Um, this is actually a snap button, so it makes it really easy to open up and get into. So I love that. So this is going to go into this project bag. So the project bag I'm showing you here is the one that's going to be included in the giveaway, but she also sent me another project bag to keep. And I am so, there's a project in this right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, the project bag. So this is the other one that came in the set. And I love this fabric so much. It reminds me of Rifle Paper Company fabrics. I don't know if that's where it's from, but it definitely has that kind of aesthetic and it's beautiful. Uh, gosh, you guys, I'm just, they're becoming like my favorite project bags. I love them so much. Such really like beautiful construction. I don't know. I, I'm not a sewist myself, so I guess I can't talk about it very um, knowledgeably, but I definitely know when you get something that's well made and this is definitely very well made. And what I love the most about this bag is this really pretty contrasting fabric. You can see they look like little knit stitches on the inside. And then the pockets. This bag has two pockets in it um, that you can see here. So two pockets and it definitely came with a little sachet as well with uh, lavender. Oh, I love it so much. It already is making the inside of the bag smell fresh, but it's it's just so nice. And then you can cinch it closed, and there you go. So this is by Marilitza at Spool Stories. Love, love, love this project bag. You know, it's actually really nice because you could just put a sock project in here if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be a big project. Or if you're working on a shawl or something larger than that, it would fit nicely in this as well. It's just really, really versatile. I, I love it. I was so thrilled when I got this in the mail and I saw them in person because it's just... <laughs> It's really, it's beautiful. So Marilitza, thank you so much for donating these to the show. Oh, and before I forget, she also was kind enough and sweet enough to include in the little uh, package, a little bib that she made for our little boy that's coming in March. And I thought that was so sweet and so thoughtful. Just, I love it. I love it so much. And with our first little one, we definitely went through lots and lots of bibs. And so this will be um, definitely get put to good use. I have it right now hanging in our kitchen in a nice place um, because it's so cute and it's a you know sweet little reminder of what's coming. But I thought that was really sweet. So Marilee, so thank you. Thank you so much. This is really nice. Um, this is the business card. And I really like the business card. Again, it's that attention to detail that I love so much about things like this. So this is her business card. And it's just the attention to detail. It's just perfect. So there's that. So this is going to be a project bag or one of these is going to be a project bag that I'm going to give away in the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway. So it will be this project bag that you see here. I'm also going to be including from the lovely Caitlin from Woolen & Co. She sent to me a collection of wool wash soaps and they are beautiful. They, her packaging number one, everything is so professional, so well put together. Like I said again, the attention to detail is there and I really appreciate that. Um, coming from one sm small business owner, I guess you could say to the next, I think that everything you send out, everything that you put in your package tells a story and I thought that the stories that are told by the packages that I received from both Marilitza at Spool Stories and Caitlin at Woolen & Co. just so beautiful so lovely so I really appreciate that but she sent um, a few different bars of wool wash a couple bombs that I'm going to share with you in a minute and then she also sent something for me to keep that was a oatmeal and calendula bar soap which is a gentle bar soap for sensitive skin for our little ones and I thought that was really sweet so I'm going to show you here what I have so the one that is going to come in the giveaway prize is this here and this is a white tea and ginger wool wash soap. And it's really beautiful. So this is the packaging. Lovely. It gives you directions on the back. And it's, gosh, it smells so good. I 
kind of want to open it, but I'm going to leave that for you whenever you receive that. And I'm also going to be including a skein of my own Fiber for the People yarn. This is a Lucky Strike color, and I couldn't help but include it in this giveaway because the colors kind of vibe so well together. This is strawberries and oats, and I called it that because even though it has this OD ecru color, there's tinges of berry kind of throughout. Sometimes you'll see occasional speckles. It's very subtle and very beautiful, and it looks really, really pretty kind of in combination with the rest of the giveaway package. So here is for the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway, this is what you'll be receiving. So you have your project bag from Spool Stories, your wool wash from Woolen & Co, and then a skein of fiber for the people yarn in strawberry and oats. So that is for the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway, and I'm super, super excited to send this out to the lucky winner. Now, in order to win this prize, this is all you have to do, and you do it in the comments section down below. I just want you to tell me what is it that keeps you knitting or crocheting or whatever fiber craft that you do? What is the one thing that keeps you going? Or let's say you took a hiatus from it for a while. What is the one thing that brings you back? Because I've found that in the time that I've been knitting seriously over the last several years, there's always something that brings me back to the craft if I'm away from it for a while or just something that keeps me involved in the craft. And I think for me, it's the whole like cozy aspect of what we do, that the calming, uh, aspect of the craft that allows us to sit and just work something with our hands and create that rhythm, that beautiful rhythm that is created from knitting. It's just so soothing for me and I think that's kind of the kicker for me. That's what keeps me doing it and keeps me coming back. So that's what I would like to know from you guys. What is it that keeps you knitting or brings you back to knitting or crocheting um, if you take a hiatus? What is that one little thing that makes it stick for you? So answer that question down in the comment thread and then by the next time I film the next episode I will choose via random number generator a winner for the 4,000 plus subscriber giveaway. Again, thank you so much for all of the support and all of the subscriptions over the several months that I've been doing this as a podcast. It really means so much to me and truly it is what keeps this going. So let's talk about some knit alongs that have recently just wrapped up on the show and then I have one knit along to announce that I'm really excited about. But first let's talk about the I Knit Sweaters Cal. This is a knit along that we started back in September and pretty much all it is is we were knitting sweaters all the way up until January 1st. There have been so many submissions of beautiful and inspiring projects on the Ravelry page in the finished object thread for this knit along. I have loved sharing them with you guys on the last several episodes of the podcast and I'm really excited to share with you guys the last few that came in and then also to announce a winner for this knit along. It is so fun. I think that's one of the greatest things about hosting these knit alongs and also following along with the pictures that you guys are posting on the Ravelry group is just all the inspiration that you get from that and that's why I love sharing that here on this platform as well showing you guys pictures of what others are doing on the group because it is just so so inspiring. So without further ado I want to share with you guys a real quick montage of some of the newest finished object sweaters from the iKnit sweaters knit along. So here we go. It's just so beautifully inspiring. You guys do amazing work and I'm really, really excited to have seen where we've come from the beginning of this knit along until now. But I wanna go ahead and announce the winner of the I Knit Sweaters Cal. But first I'm gonna tell you what it is that you'll be winning. So okay, so for the I Knit Sweaters Knit Along, this is your prize. As promised, I have included, I'm, I mentioned that I was gonna include two skeins of fiber for the people yarn. I'm including one skein because I'm including another really great prize to go 
go along with this one skein uh, in addition. So I kind of sweetened the deal that way. So you're going to get one skein of Fiber for the People yarn in the one can become too familiar with veggies or vegetables colorway. Um, I call it one can become too familiar with veggies when I'm talking about it with my husband or we're wrapping skeins, but it is one can become too familiar with vegetables. It is a beautiful and gentle speckled skein with steely blue colors, some peachy speckles going throughout there, neon yellows and greens. It's really, really very beautiful, very fresh. Kind of a refreshing colorway i guess you could say so this is one can become too familiar with veggies this is on my 80 20 two ply twist taylor's favorite base so this will be coming in your prize package in addition to caitlin at woolen and co she creates the most amazing bombs so she has a lanolin infused hand salve and this is called soothe and it is lavender chamomile rose and calendula so this will also be coming in your package from Woolen and & Co. and it is amazing. So beautiful. Her products are just delicious, I have to tell you. So this will be coming in your package and then also from Woolen & Co. I am including a handcrafted wool wash in saffron and honey and that will be included in your prize package as well. So you will be getting a skein of Fiber for the People yarn. One can become too familiar with vegetables. You will be getting the handcrafted wool wash soap and the Soothe um, lanolin infused body balm or hand salve, if you will. So this is all coming to you for the I Knit Sweaters Cal prize. And without further ado, the winner of the prize is Linda at Linda Makes Stuff on Ravelry. Congratulations, Linda. Get in touch with me either on Ravelry or send me an email directly at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. Let me know where I can send your prize. And this is her beautiful sweater that she knit. This is the Siri Cardigan by Linnea Omen. I believe I'm pronouncing it right, but here it is. Check it out. Okay, the next knit along that I want to talk about that is wrapped is the Fire Pit Mitts knit along. The Fire Pit Mitts is a pattern by yours truly and it is a pair of fingerless mittens in various different lengths and sizes and I was so excited to share this pattern with you guys and I'm still uh, today still floored by how many downloads it's getting from both my website and also from Ravelry. Thank you guys so much for that support. If you haven't checked it out, Fire Pit Mitts is a free download on Ravelry. You can find it there or you can also find it at Fiber for the People Yarn. Com. It is a super easy knit, super, it's a therapy knit for sure. I kind of, I'm starting to call these bubble bath knits because it's just, it provides you with that soothing therapy that a bubble bath would because it's just that mindless knitting, super easy and super fast. So you get that instant gratification as well. It's a really, really cool pattern. So we did a knit along for this and there were so many great submissions. I'm so excited to see your guys' versions of the fire pit mitts. They're really, really amazing. So before I give the announcement for the prize winner, I want to show you guys what has come through on the finished object thread for the fire pit mitts knit along. So beautiful and I think what I love the most about this is seeing all the different yarns that you've chosen also all the different patterns that you guys were working you guys it's just so cool so in I can't say it enough how inspiring it is so really neat but without further ado let's go ahead and name the prize winner for this knit along all right so the winner of the fire pit mitts knit along is perpetual stitch which is cat cat congratulations thank you so much for participating she knit a pair of fire pit mitts for her daughter in a red and a blue color and I believe the yarn has has either some kind of a gold uh, fiber running through it. It might be Stellina, but they're adorable. Here is a picture of Kat's fire pit mitts again, so you can see what she worked up, and I think they're great. <laughs> 
So Kat, congratulations. You are the winner of, and I didn't announce this ahead of time, but let me go ahead and show you what you've won. You've won a skein of Fiber for the People yarn. This is in the tawdry colorway on my 8020 Taylor's favorite two-ply twist. Um, this, ugh, I love this colorway so much. And every time I hold it up to show it on camera, I'm just always floored by how beautiful it is. So this is tawdry. And you will also be receiving, in addition to this, from Woolen & Co, again, because I'm obsessed with Caitlin's products right now, you will be receiving an anti-inflammatory muscle balm. And this is actually really, really cool because for we knitters, um, we know what it's like to knit, 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 and then our hands get really sore and achy, and this is actually just perfect for that. And that's what she recommends to use it for um, when she was explaining to me all of the different products that she sent to me. And I think it's great. It has Arnica, Comfrey, Clove, and Chili in it. And it smells like you don't even know. So this is also yours, Kat. So it is Warmth by Woolen Co. And it is a anti-inflammatory um, hand salve and balm. And you'll be receiving this and a skein of Fiber for the People yarn in the tawdry colorway. So congratulations, Kat at Perpetual Stitch for knitting a pair of fire pit mitts for your daughter. I think that's awesome. So I want to introduce to you guys an idea that I've had for a year-long knit-along for this upcoming 2018 knit year, I guess you could say. I know that we've already kind of ventured in a little bit to January, but I think that's okay. I've decided I would like to do a whole year of hats. And I know that sounds like a lot. I mean, I don't know what anybody could possibly do with 12 knit hats. Of course, I know what I would do. I would wear them because I'm obsessed with knitting hats and wearing knit hats. And I think that's kind of why I decided to do this as a knit along, as a year long knit along, because I just love, it's, I think hands down, it's my favorite thing to knit for sure are hats. There's so many ways that you can customize them. They're super fast. They fly off the needles. I just love them. So I want to do a year of hats and I think I'm actually going to make the hashtag WNH year of hats K-A-L. So how I've decided to do this is run it every like month by month. So every month will be a different theme for a different kind of hat that we are going to knit. In order to win a prize or to participate in the knit along, you don't have to knit 12 hats. You can jump in anytime you want. You can participate in one month. You can participate in all 12 months. It's completely up to you. It's the more hats that you knit. So the more months that you participate and the more finished objects you submit, the more chances that you have of winning a prize at the end, which I have not determined the prize yet that's kind of a ways out from now but it will be a great prize um, definitely considering the work that will go into this knit along should you choose to um, knit several hats so that's definitely to come but I want to tell you a little bit about how this is going to work each month will be a different theme for a different hat and you need to knit one hat per month each month at the end of the month or at the very beginning of the following month will be the deadline for the finished object submission for that month so if you are knitting for a particular month only, you definitely want to have your hat submitted by the deadline for that particular month. At the end of all 12 months, all the submissions will be counted and those will be where I choose my from random number generator. That will be where I choose my winner. So that's if that's not complicated, I'll definitely lay this out on the Ravelry page in writing so you can see it clearly, but that's kind of how this is going to work. So there will be a cutoff day for each month at the end of the month for that particular hat and in that particular theme. So here is the breakdown of how we're going to do it. So I have it here right now month by month, all the different themes for the hats for this knit along. So starting in January, the first theme is a pom pom hat. So we are going to knit a pom pom hat for January, you can knit it out of any yarn that you want, you can knit any pattern that you want, it just has to have a pom pom. And that's because I'm obsessed with pom poms right now, as I will talk about later in the podcast. But that's what the theme is for January is to knit a pom pom hat for February, we are going to knit a hat for somebody of the opposite opposite sex. Pretty self-explanatory. If you are a lady, you're going to knit a hat for a man and it can be a young man. It can be an old man. It can be a baby. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's a boy if you're a girl and it's a girl if you're a boy. And that's the way that month will work for February. And remember, these don't have to be for yourself. Obviously, you can gift them later on down the road. What you do with these hats is completely up to you. This is also a really great 
opportunity to knit up some charity hats if you don't know what you're going to do with all 12 of these hats. So consider this an experience builder for hat knitting, but when it comes to what you're going to do with these hats, it's completely up to you. And quite honestly, I think that's an interesting part of this knit along is because you can share what it is that you're going to do with that hat with the group. And I think that's kind of a cool discussion to have too, is to talk about what it is that you're going to do with the hat, even if it means you're going to keep it in your own wardrobe for every single hat of the knit along, because that is totally totally fine. So February, knit a hat for somebody of the opposite sex. March is a baby hat. You're going to knit a hat for a baby. April is a lacy hat. It doesn't have to be with lace weight yarn. It just has to use a lace motif in the pattern. That's pretty much all it is, plain and simple. May is a skill building hat. So come up with a hat design or choose a hat pattern that builds your skills. It incorporates some kind of a technique that you've never done before. June is completely up to you. You can knit whatever hat you want. It is your choice. July is where it gets a little bit tricky. Should you dare to venture into July? that is where you have to come up with your own original design for a knit hat. You don't have to do this one, but it's a lot of fun if you decide you want to try. And I think sharing your process and sharing your design journey for that hat is really, really an interesting aspect of this part of the knit along. So you can wade into those waters if you'd like to, but you are going to be designing your own hat in July. August, this is where you're gonna get a jump start or a head start, if you will, on a holiday gift. So this is where you choose a pattern for a hat that you could give to somebody for the holidays. Just so that way you have that little backup gift and you don't have to do that little bit of extra last minute holiday knitting. So that will be August. September, knit a hat that has cables. October, knit a hat out of fingering weight yarn. November is another your choice hat, so you can do whatever it is that pleases you. Have fun with that. I mean, the world is your oyster. And finally, December, knit a hat that has stripes. So that's it, guys. Pretty much the breakdown of what we're gonna do for a year of hats. Every month will have a theme. You don't have to participate in every single month. You, of course, can participate in every single month, and I think that would be awesome. It's completely up to you. Take from this what you will. What you do with these hats is completely up to you. You can think of all the possibilities, but definitely join us for a year year of knitting hats. I will be posting all the information for this knit along on the Ravelry page so you can check it out there. But just so you know, January, we're starting right now, knit a pom-pom hat. That is pretty much it. I don't care what size of hat it is, who it's for, what have you, as long as that hat has a pom-pom, it qualifies for January for the knit along. So we are already into January just a little bit, so we are a little behind, but that's okay. I think we can do it if we put our minds to it. And remember, it's about the experience. It's about the process. So let's say you attend attempt to get a hat done and it just doesn't get finished by January, no sweat. Submit it in the chatter thread, talk about it, share your experience, be a part of that inspiration building. That's what's really important about this. So when I started this podcast back in February, I had a large list of goals that I wanted to achieve, crafting goals um, that I wanted to achieve by the, the by the same time the following year. Um, and I didn't really achieve all of those goals, but I don't think about that, I don't think on that negatively because I think that what happened over the course of the last year is really, really special and important. Number one, I started a knitting podcast. And if you've watched the podcast grow from episode one, you know that it's really come a long ways and I'm very proud of that. And that has a lot to do with the amazing support that I get from the viewers um, every episode that I put out. And so I thank you for that. Um, and that was a huge accomplishment for me because I feel like I took the knitting podcast and I ran with it and now it's become a part of my life and my livelihood and I love it so, so very much. So I'm very proud of that goal. So that was one that I accomplished in the previous uh, crafting year, I guess you could say. Another one was that I wanted to learn how to dye yarn. And not only did I learn how to dye yarn, I started a hand dyed yarn business that has become very successful, again, thanks to the support from you guys, the members of this knitting community. And so I'm definitely patting myself on the back for that accomplishment. Um, lots and lots of great things have come from that as well, as you well know if you've been watching the podcast from day one. So I thank you very much for that. I didn't really become a great sewist. I didn't do all the sewing that I thought I was going to do. I didn't learn to crochet. There's a few other things that I didn't do, but you know what? That's okay. I don't think it's 
healthy to dwell on the things that we didn't accomplish, but to really focus on the things that we did accomplish, especially when we're talking about crafting. Um, there's other things that we could be dwelling on, as we all know. So I have set aside some of the crafting goals that I have for this year, and the list is a lot shorter, because not only am I expecting a baby at the end of March, and I have no idea how the rest of my year when it comes to my free time to craft is really going to unfold. Um, I also am running a business now and a podcast channel or and a YouTube channel and so there's lots of things going on so I kind of shortened my list down a little bit to make it a little bit more manageable um, and also to kind of prioritize the things that I really want to do in the new year. So the first thing that I did put on my list though and some of you may laugh at this um, is that I would like to still learn how to sew and not that I don't know how to sew not that it's um, a foreign concept to me but that I would like to at least sew one of the patterns that I purchased last year when I had all the big plans. I just want to sew one of those patterns. And as you can see here, I have quite a few patterns that I purchased just last year. Now this is coming from somebody who doesn't sew and had never sewn a pattern in their life. I went out and I purchased a bunch of patterns. Now maybe this isn't that many, but to me that's a lot. So I would like to at least dive into this stack and complete one of these patterns um, this year, just because it's really something I want to do. It's not even just I'm going to do it because I want to say that I did it. I really would like to sew a garment. I would like to do that so I can develop that skill further because I think it's a good skill to have and I would like to be able to do it more regularly um, for various different reasons. So I definitely want to dive into my stack of patterns. My second goal, and as I'm looking down in my notes, I really only have three major crafting goals this year and that's totally fine, but my second of these goals is to knit what really makes me happy. When it comes to knitting, I think last year I kind of went forward with the intention of just knitting lots of projects because they built skills or because they were a knit along that I wanted to participate or because it was a trendy knit or what have you. And, and there, there's nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't always make me happy. I don't always look forward to doing those things um, because for whatever reason in some cases they can kind of almost seem like I'm forcing myself to knit something just because of some, you know, predetermined uh, reason for doing it. I don't, yeah, I don't know. But this year I really want to focus and I urge you as well to focus on knitting the things that really make you happy, the things that really make you grab your project bag, sit down with it and be excited about what you're working on um, and not to fear you know, putting the kibosh on something that's just not doing it for you. That's just maybe frustrating you. The stitch isn't one that you really like to work. Um, you find the only reason you're doing it is just so that you can show progress on either Instagram or Ravelry or what have you. And I really think that for me, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that the things that I'm working on are the things that really make me happy and that bring me that kind of inner peace that knitting does for us. And so that's my second goal is to knit the things that make me happy. And then my third, and this is more related to my fiber for the people yarn business, is I would like to participate in one trade show this year. Um, I've been thinking about it since I started the business and I have a couple in mind that I'd like to apply for, but I definitely want to participate in a trade show. So that's it. That's all I have at the moment. I'm sure I might add to that list or change some things around, but I'm curious to know what you guys have as your creative goals. Um, just add it to the comment section. I might even actually just open up a thread in the Ravelry group to kind of hear what you guys have to say about your creative goals for 2018, because just listening or listening, reading and talking about it um, with other people and hearing their creative goals, that's inspiring all in itself. So look for that over on the Ravelry group. But for now, that's what I have in my goal bag for 2018. So how about I actually pick up my mug of tea that has been cooling because the beginning segment of my podcast was a little longer than it usually is. I am drinking today a new tea. I actually just got it today. We had to do some errands at Target, um, but we were there today and I picked up a box because if I keep drinking Tazo dessert tea, the lem glazed lemon loaf, I'm going to limit my you know, tea repertoire and I don't want to do that, but that has really been my hot ticket lately. But what I'm drinking today is actually by Simply Balanced, which is fair trade organic tea that I believe is a, it's a Target brand. I'm almost positive it's a Target brand, yeah. Um, but it is peach honey, so here it is. Okay, so the interesting thing about this, um, is that I picked it up thinking it was an herbal tea because it mentions on the front, it's a blend of white tea and chamomile with peach and honey flavors. 
and I didn't even think to look at the caffeine level because when I saw peach and white tea and chamomile, I just thought that it would be herbal. But now I'm thinking white tea must have a little bit of caffeine in it. <laughs> and I, I didn't think about that, but it is a level two in the caffeine level. And that's 16 to 30 milligrams of caffeine, which is really not very much at, at all. I think if you drink a soda, you probably get more than that, but it's not a big deal. But I thought that was interesting that it has chamomile in it and also some caffeine. It's like, don't take your downers with your uppers. I don't think that's a good example <laughs> of this, but anyway, it's really, really good. And what I love so much about this, I love honey in tea, especially peach tea. I didn't put any honey in this myself because it mentions that it has honey in the tea, um, some kind of a honey flavor in the tea. So all I did was sweetened it with a little bit of Splenda, but that honey flavor, it really comes in, it hits you really hard. It's beautiful. It's, it's very floral. Um, you definitely get the strong peach notes and then this like floral honey flavor as well. So it's kind of a really well-rounded, tea um, without having to add a lot of extra sweeteners so and I really barely used any not even a whole packet of Splenda and it's just it's really nice and perfectly sweet and it doesn't give you that feeling of a bitter caffeinated tea and that's what's great about white tea and I have had white tea in the past and maybe I've realized in the past that white tea is caffeinated if that's even the case you guys don't quote me on tea I'm not a tea expert I just like drinking tea and if it says caffeine free on the box, then I know that it doesn't have caffeine, but it's not because I am, you know, an expert. So whatever. This though is really, really yummy. So this is peach honey, like I mentioned, by Simply Balanced and you can get it at Target. And I love it so much because that honey flavor just really comes through. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really refreshing. And I'm drinking it today in my Party Cats mug. This is a mug I've had for a little while now. And I think I've called it my fancy cat's mug in the past because they are, look at, look at this guy. He's fancy. So that is what I'm drinking today. And it's really nice and cozy. And as you may have noticed, I have no light outside anymore. So not only is it cozy in here, it's dark outside. I've got some candles going. I'm really getting in touch with my hygge right now. So we're all getting in touch with that. So if you haven't gotten your own cup of tea or what it is that you want to drink right now, pause. Go get some tea, go get some wine, go get some coffee, what, whatever it is that you want to drink right now. Maybe light a candle or two and get cozy because you might be in for a long show. <laughs> Daniel Lamb, who is a fourth year student at the University of Chicago in the School of Medicine and also a teaching assistant, decided that he was going to help students learn about the anatomy of the eyeball using knitting. He knit all the structures of an anatomically correct eyeball and created a model with working parts to demonstrate how an eyeball works so that his students could have an easier time learning this anatomical science because he himself had a really hard time with this when he was in his early stages of his education. He took up knitting when he was in grade school to impress a girl, but it turns out that it didn't really work because after he made this attempt to impress this girl, he never spoke to her again. But he continued to pick up the knitting needles and actually now runs a blog called Masculinity, which is a really clever name for a blog, where he talks about all of the things that he works on, including his knitting projects to help demonstrate anatomy concepts. But the one I wanted to share with you guys today was the eyeball model that he created. What's really cool about this is number one, it was knit. Number two, it has working parts. So the way that he constructed the model, he actually made it so that when you manipulate certain parts of the model, you can see how the muscles of the eye actually contract and work with one another to make this organ function. And so I thought that was really cool. The teacher in me, um, if you're not familiar, I was a teacher prior to having my first child, I decided to to retire from teaching to stay home with my son but I was a teacher I taught for about 10 years and so whenever I see things like this I get really excited um, at the different methods that people use for teaching concepts and so this method that he used this real hands-on approach and I and I think also the craft aspect of this 
is really inspiring for me because kids really cling on or students and I know these are not kids these are college students um, when you can see something three-dimensional like this and use it and, and manipulate it and it's something tangible uh, that sticks with people and that is what helps them learn concepts and so I thought this was really cool when I read this because not only does it reinforce the whole idea of, of using craft to teach skills but it's also showing how this really great craft can be used in such a special and important way so I congratulate and applaud Daniel Lamb for this endeavor and I encourage you guys to definitely check out his blog masculinity anytime we can broaden the scope of this knitting community to see who's out there and what they're doing um, the great things that they're doing with the craft I, I think that's really important so definitely check out masculinity which is a blog by Daniel Lamb <laughs> still on a roll you guys with hoes and foes let me just tell you so I have one half object to share with you guys today or a hoe and I have four finished objects that I want to share with you guys three of which are not with me because they were gifts that got sent away for Christmas and that's totally fine because I have some pictures that I'm going to use to share with you guys um, so let's go ahead and get started with the half object that I have now I'm going to share the finished portion of this first and I'm going to save the other portion that I'm currently working on for my whip segment because I have a little bit more to talk about uh, with this and also to kind of get your guys's um, opinion about a couple of things so if you follow on Instagram you know that I've been working on a house sock uh, pattern or design I am a sucker for house socks and when I say house socks I think I, what I mean is not quite a slipper and not quite a sock it's the, it's that in between um, and I like it when they're kind of ankle length or a shorty sock I love longer house socks as well longer chunky socks um, but I think the more versatile sock for me that I can wear for longer periods of time are the shortier socks that are a little little on the chunky side so that's kind of what I'm working on right now so I have finished one of the design that I'm working on I'm going to show that to you guys right now and I'm really excited about this I am knitting this in fiber for the people yarn this is in the minky colorway this was a colorway that came out in the last shop update um, there are two skeins of minky left in the shop right now but it is on the singles base this is the vigor base this is 100 percent superwash new zealand paul worth dk um, and it's beautiful i have enjoyed working with this yarn so much um it's it's great in the hand it feels sturdy but yet it's soft I can tell it's gonna make for a really great kind of house sock that gets a lot of hearty wear um, I love it and the color you guys I mean just look at those tones of browns they're so beautiful together it's a really multi-dimensional colorway because the way that those tones come together in the sock and in the fabric I love it so much I can't say enough about it it's really beautiful and I know I guess I can be biased because it's my own yarn but I've mentioned it in the past if I love something I'll tell you how much I love it and that's just that's just the way it is but yes it's really really beautiful so this is the minky colorway on the vigor base now this is what I have for my first uh, version of this sock now I don't have a name for this sock yet um, I'm still kind of working up the rest of the pattern on my other sock but this is what I have going on so far so we just have a basic two by two rib cuff and then we have a really beautiful textured stitch pattern that kind of goes around the ankle here down the front or at the top of the foot there's a kind of like a racing stripe of stockinette going down the side of the foot and then we have stockinette for the heel flap and then down for the bottom of the foot we get that uh, textured pattern again here and then a stockinette rounded toe so that's kind of what I have going on here and I really really love it and I especially love it on the foot it's a real I don't even know if this makes sense it's kind of a graceful sock because when you put it on the lacy stitch work um, which I'll get a little closer so you can see it here that lacy stitch work is it has a little bit of an open work feel to it so you can see you can see little bits of your foot through there it kind of is a little bit on the I don't want to say that a slipper sock is sexy, but I guess you could say if there's going to be an element to this that is unusual of socks, it would be that because it has that lacy texture to it. Um, 
but it looks beautiful on the foot. So I'm really, really happy. When we get to the whip section, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about some changes that I have made to the second sock, which is fun. What's really fun about designing a sock pattern, I guess, because if you don't like what you did on the first, you don't have to completely tear it out. You can keep that as a frame of reference and you can do something different on the second. And nobody's going to be the wiser because they're your socks, at least this prototype pair. So I'll talk about that in the whip section. But that is my first half object and I'm really excited to have it done. This is going to be a pattern that I feature on Ravelry in my shop on Ravelry for patterns and then also at the Fiber for the People yarn shop shop as well um, once I get it all finalized because I've had a lot of positive feedback lots of you guys are really loving this and so I'm really excited to share that with you guys so this is my own original design for a house sock and I will show you the other I have some progress on the other one in just a bit Okay, so my finished object that I wanna share with you guys that I actually have, um, it's just another pair of house socks that I knit for my husband because he has a pair that I knit a while ago, but they were made, I knit them with kind of an unusual single ply yarn. I'm not really sure why I chose that. And so they, he wore them so often that they wore a hole in the heel and it's not really worth uh, fixing because the yarn, I don't know, it's really funky. It was one of my first uh, pairs of socks a while ago. So I needed to knit him something else. I had some leftover yarn from a gift knit that I did for Christmas that he was interested in. And so I worked it up into a slipper sock. And now he's worn these several times since I've taken them, since I finished them. So they're not pristine and they're starting to kind of look like they've been loved a little bit and that's okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys anyway. Now I have to put these on my sock blockers backwards because my husband has size 13 feet because he's very tall and it actually works kind of well. So these are just a basic vanilla slipper house sock. I've made this with Patton's um, Shetland Tweed Chunky. Uh, Patton's, yeah, Patton's, I think it's just Patton's Chunky Tweeds. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I chose this yarn when we get to my next project, the hat that I actually knit originally with this yarn, but this was the yarn that I was, I had some extra of, and so I used it to whip up a pair of vanilla house socks. And these are really just a very basic construction. It's a uh, one by one rib cuff here for about 20 rows. And then I did about an inch and a half of the leg, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and then I knit the length of the foot and then a rounded toe here. So it's really, really very basic. And this is a chunky weight yarn. And he's, and you can see the tweedy kind of multicolored flex in there, which are really pretty. It's like, it's funky and it's still manly because the gray, I don't know. So it just works, but he wears them all the time. He really loves them. I'm super happy with them. Uh, they flew off the needles, took no time at all, and they're a finished object. I want to knit like a million of these for myself because they really just are like that perfect go-to slip-on house sock. So it feels kind of weird telling you about my other finished objects and not having anything in my hand to show you, but I'm gonna do this in pictures if I can. So the first um, finished object that I wanna share with you was a gift that I knitted for my sister-in-law. She has a Pinterest wish list, and on her Pinterest wish list, I noticed that she had a beanie from the store Madewell. Um, Madewell is just an online retailer and a brick and mortar retailer that's affiliated with the store J Crew. if you're familiar. Um, but this beanie came from their shop and it was knit with this really pretty gray um, tweed yarn and the tweed in the yarn were, were these multicolored flex like you see in the sock here so you can see the multicolored flex there the yarn in the Madewell hat that she had on her Pinterest page was very very similar to that and I don't know where um, or how I th immediately thought of this yarn because I hadn't used the yarn before. I had only seen it, um, the Patton's yarn. But I thought I've seen that yarn before, I could make that hat. Um, and it would almost be like a copycat of the one that they sell at Madewell. So I did some research. I looked up the hat um, on the Madewell website and I wanted to see kind of, wanted to see what that yarn was made out of. And it was, um, it doesn't actually say the fiber content of the yarn made in the Madewell hat. It just says it's recycled materials, which leads me to believe it's a combination of cotton 
um, maybe a little bit of wool, but probably mostly cotton because that when you pull recycled materials together for yarns like that, that's usually where you're getting them from. Maybe even a little acrylic or some, some other kind of a fiber in there. But um, from the reviews that I read on that hat, because I kind of wanted to know as much about the hat as I could, the, the structure of the hat, the pattern of the hat was, that's definitely something really easy to improvise, but it was that yarn I was curious about. Um, and based on some of the reviews of the hat not being that warm. I knew it must have been some kind of a fabric um, created from a fiber that didn't really include much wool. And so I was excited, I guess, because the the fiber that I wanted to use, the, this Patton's tweed that I knew about, was created from wool and I knew that it would make a really nice warm hat. So needless to say, I created a copycat knit of the Madewell pom-pom hat and I'm really excited about it because it looks so great and it's a, an excellent example of how we knitters with this skill that we have can actually um, create items with our hands instead of having to purchase them from major retailers like like Madewell. Not that there's anything wrong with that it, just because I think it's cool that we can make these things on our own. So here is the Madewell hat that is um, what was on my sister-in-law's Pinterest page. So you can see here it is a really fun multicolored tweed and here is the hat that I knit for my sister and you can definitely see that it's a really cool um, kind of comparison copycat knit. So we have the Madewell hat and we have my own version. And the pattern that I used for this was from, it was just improvised based on her head measurements. Um, and I actually don't know her exact head measurements. I just went with my own head. Uh, and I created a rib knit hat just like that. And then I made the pom pom at the top and I love it. So it came out really, really great. So that is my first or my second finished object that I want to share with you guys. And it was a last minute uh, Christmas gift. I think that first hat that I made for my sister-in-law kind of pushed me into this whole pom-pom hat thing because I hadn't made a pom-pom before. I, I hadn't really made many pom-pom hats in the past. I don't think they look that great on me, I guess, but I love the way they look on other people and I really love making pom-poms for hats. And so um, my sister-in-law requested um, another little pom-pom type hat for my niece who is three and you know, anytime I have loved ones nearby and it's the holidays, I either want to like teach them to knit or I want to knit for them. That's just something that happens. And so uh, when she made a request to make a similar hat to the one that I made for her, for my niece, I jumped on it and had a lot of fun doing it. We were at Joanne actually looking for some various different things. I think we were taking advantage of some of the after Christmas sales going on and we were in the yarn section and we found a really, really beautiful ball of black, uh, multicolored tweed patents worsted yarn. I'm obsessed with patents. You probably well know this by now. We put together a really pretty neon pink yarn for the pom-pom and then the black tweed yarn for the hat and we and I came up with this little hat for my niece Lou. So you can see here it has a basic ribbed brim and it is a stockinette hat with um, a basic decreased crown and a bright pink pom-pom and it definitely does Kind of remind you of those crew cut styles that you see from J. Crew, just perfect for my niece and for my sister in law because that's kind of the style that they both have. And so I was really excited about that hat and it looks so cute on my niece. You can see that here. She wore it and it was comfortable. Um, and I was I was really excited about that. So that is pom pom hat number two, finished object number three. And I really wish I had something tangible to hold on as I'm talking to this, uh, talking about this with you because it's strange not having anything to put up in front of the camera, but I'm doing my best. Okay, the third, or I should say, one, two. Okay, the fourth finished object that I have is another pom-pom hat. Something has happened. I've been bitten by the pom-pom bug. I can't even tell you. So I had made the first slouchy Madewell look light hat for my sister. And then I made the little slouchy pom-pom hat for my niece. And then my brother uh, said that he wanted a slouchy pom-pom hat. And anytime I get a, have an excuse to knit a hat, especially a chunky hat, I get really excited because I just love knitting hats. And so I said, sure, let me, you know, I can work up a hat for you. I, th that's, I love doing that. It's, it's a lot of fun for me. So we kind of talked about what he was looking for. And he mentioned to me this striped color pattern that you see from the Hampton Bay Company um, clothing line. So I wasn't 100% familiar with Hampton Bay in the past. I know I had heard the name somewhere and I had seen this striped pattern before. 
Um, but it wasn't until he brought it to my attention that I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely seen this before and it's a really cool color pattern. So this is kind of what the Hampton Bay striped pattern looks like. Um, anything from Hampton Bay is really, really incredibly expensive. Um, I think the coat that I'm showing you here is well over a thousand dollars. I don't know, but he said he really liked this striped pattern and asked if it would be something that I could do in a hat. I actually don't even think he asked if I could do it in a hat. I just mentioned that I could do that in a hat. So anyway, I ran with that and I came up with another improvised uh, hat pattern using the Hampton Base stripes and that neutral base color. Again, I did this out of Patton's yarn just because um, it's easy yarn to get a hold of in a pinch. It's great quality yarn. It's 100% wool um, and it comes in exactly the colors that I needed. So I shot off to Joann's, got super excited at having this like challenge uh, in front of me of coming up with this color pattern in a hat. I bought all the yarn that I needed for it and I whipped it up. And so here you have my brother's slouchy pom-pom hat with the Hampton Bay striped theme going through it. So this is, like I said, Patton's classic bulky and it's all wool. Um, it's a real, it's a heavy bulky. It's not super bulky, but it's a pretty heavy bulky yarn. It's a beautiful yarn. The colors are great. They really have lots of great color options in this yarn. Perfect for projects like this. So I improvised the pattern. I have been keeping track of the details of each of the patterns. This is definitely one that I plan on writing up and sharing because I've received lots of requests for this pattern um, exactly the way you see it. So I do plan on writing up the pattern for the stripes and everything exactly the way that you see it in this picture um, because I really loved it. It came out beautiful. The stitch definition was really gorgeous. It fit him really nicely, as you can see here. So it was just a great, fun, fast knit. I think I knit that hat in maybe a day, a day and a half of, you know, when you can sit down and knit. Lou's hat, the little hat was a day, and then Jessica's hat was maybe two days. These hats are very, very fast. They kind of flew. And then when it came to making the pom-poms, I was obsessed with making pom-poms. Um, for Lou's hat and for my brother's hat, the striped hat, I actually went out and bought a pom-pom maker. Um, my sister-in-law's hat, she has a pom-pom that I just made from my hand. Uh, I wrapped the yarn around my hand and kind of improvised a pom-pom that way. And then I decided to go out and buy a pom-pom maker and it opened up a whole world of possibilities for me. So anyway, I kind of became obsessed. But those are the three hats that I knit for Christmas gifts and post Christmas gifts and I had so much fun doing it. They flew off the needles. They gave me that instant gratification. And then of course you have my slipper socks that I knit for my husband. I'm going to hold them up and show them to you again just because I get that satisfying feeling of holding something up in front of the camera since this whole segment has really been just me telling you stories and showing you pictures. <laughs> but other than that, it's been pretty successful. I don't have any um, major progress on my other projects, which I'll talk about in the next segment, but it's because I was getting a kick out of doing these little projects for my family while they were in town for the holidays, and that's meaningful to me, and that's, that's what made me happy. So I knit what made me happy during that time. So there you go. Those are my finished objects so far. So let's go ahead and talk about works in progress. I'm not gonna share with you my regular works in progress. I have a, a cardigan, a sweater, a baby blanket. Um, those are my kind of regulars that I've been working on pre-Christmas. I guess you could say pre like a week and a half before Christmas because like I said, I got wrapped up doing some last minute Christmas knitting and then a little bit of post Christmas knitting and I kind of put those things down for a little bit so I could work on those things. So I haven't made a ton of progress since we talked last, but I have made some additional progress like I mentioned on my house socks that I am designing um, and I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the second sock in this set. So I showed you the first sock as my, my half object. So the first house sock that I have, um, I showed it to you here and there's a little bit of a variation that's happening between this and the second sock of the pair. I'm making some modifications and so I'm going to share that with you guys right now. And this, like I mentioned, is actually what's really fun about designing a sock pattern or I guess you could a mitten pattern, even something where you're going to make two anyway, is if you do decide that you want to make changes, considering this is like a prototype of the final pattern, you can do it in the second and you don't feel like you have to start all over again. 
you definitely don't have to do what you did with the first sock in the second sock. I feel like that's a waste of creative time um, because you have a whole nother uh, kind of canvas to play with, if you will. So I want to show you guys what I'm doing on the second one, talk to you a little bit about it, maybe even get some suggestions from you guys um, because there's something to talk about here. So what I have so far, and I'm going to put this on a sock blocker just so I can make it a little bit more... I can stretch the stitches out a little bit if I can. Let's see. Okay, so this is on DPN, so it's going to be a little awkward on a sock blocker because I have my instep uh, double pointed needle is kind of being stretched strangely, but you'll get the gist of what I'm doing. Okay, so this is what I have so far of the second sock in the pair. Um, it's on here kind of wonky just because of my DPNs, but it's enough to show you what I have going on. So um, not a lot different. If you look at the, you're not seeing a lot of difference right now. So here is the original and here is the one I'm working on now. So the original, you'll see that I still have that textured pattern and that is obviously going to stay the same in this one as well. So a few things that I did differently. Uh, needle size. The first sock in the pair, I knit the cuff on a size needle that was smaller than what I used to knit the rest of the sock so that the cuff would be a little bit more snug, um, kind of like we do when we knit socks. Sometimes you'll knit the cuff on a size smaller needle. I did that here so the rest of the sock is actually knit on a size larger. And so I actually decided that I'm not going to change needle size. I'm just going to maintain that smaller needle size um, down into the body of the sock. It's going to make the sizing of the sock slightly different, just slightly different because I'm using a smaller needle. But the stitch definition is really a lot more beautiful in my opinion. I feel like it's a lot more... Um, defined. I think it's easier to kind of see the nuances of the stitch pattern. If I can show you both together, I don't know, it's kind of hard to make a comparison really. So there's that sock and there's that one. It's If they're not side by side, it's kind of difficult to make that comparison, but I definitely do notice it and so I really really love that change. So that's the first change that I made to this is I'm going to maintain the smaller needle size throughout the body of the sock. The second thing that I wanted to do with the second sock that I didn't feel like I really got enough of in the first sock was continue to kind of add texture to the sock. And a really great way to add texture to a sock, if in addition to the texture that the body of the sock already has, is to work up your heel flap with a textured stitch. And if you look up, you know, heel flap stitches or heel flap stitch patterns, there's myriad of heel flap stitch patterns. You can find so many different ways of, of knitting a heel flap. It does not just have to be a basic stockinette heel flap. And that's actually what I did in the first sock. So in the first, this is just your basic stockinette stitch heel flap. There's nothing special going on here. And I feel like this big block of stockinette stitch with the heavily textured stitch going on here. It just it just was too um, stark to me. I wanted it to be textured. I, it didn't need to match the stitch pattern here and I didn't want it to match the stitch pattern here because I still wanted it to be a heel flap separate from the rest of the sock. But I wanted it to be more textured than it is right now. And my go-to textured heel flap, because I really love working it, is a slip stitch heel flap. And it, I call it a slip stitch ribbed heel flap because it has a ribbed look to it. Um, and that's kind of what you're doing essentially is you're ribbing because you're knitting a stitch and then you're slipping the next stitch purl wise with the yarn in front and wrapping it around. So you're, you're getting a slipped purl stitch essentially. So you are creating a rib, but it's a really beautiful rib. It almost has... Um, I don't know, like a poor man's brioche look to it, I guess you could say. Um, it's really pretty. So here is my slip stitch heel flap that you can see right here. So now, and I'm going to take this off because I want to be able to manipulate the sock a little bit to show you. So I love this because it really does lend a really beautiful texture to the back of the sock. And it's not punchy. It's not out there and it's not fighting with the texture of the stitch pattern. It's almost just really complimentary. Um, and just it just gives you a little bit more texture going on here instead of a block of stockinette stitch, you know, adjacent to big portions of kind of like a lace stitch. So this is the comparison here. 
I hope you can see it. It's really hard sometimes to show. So there you go. This is the basic stockinette heel flap with the texture of the stitch pattern here. And then this is the, the slip stitch heel flap with the texture of the stitch pattern there. And I think that even looking at this right now on the screen, I'm so happy that I made that change because I love the uh, change in texture from one texture to the other, as opposed to one texture going into what is really not very textured at all, um, stockinette stitch. And I love me some stockinette stitch, believe me, but sometimes I feel like it, you just need a little bit more texture and um, that's what I wanted to have happen here. So. That's the second change that I've made and actually that's all. I've only made two changes to this point and I don't think I'll make any more because um, I'm on the rest, I'm working the rest of the foot with my stitch pattern and I really love it. I, I know that there's a way that I could have incorporated my stitch pattern in the gusset of the sock. So when you're doing a heel flapping gusset, you're kind of going to naturally interrupt whatever stitch pattern it is that you're using on the instep of the foot and then also on the ankle of the foot because you have um, when you're knitting a gusset a sock gusset you're doing continual decreases to kind of narrow out the gusset of your sock if that makes any sense if you're um, a sock knitter this probably makes sense to you if you've never knit a sock before i'll show i'll show you the sock on the sock blocker and you can kind of understand perhaps what I'm saying here, but I did try to figure how could I carry out the stitch pattern. So if you look right here, there's a block of stockinette right here. Now this is where my, my gusset is kind of narrowing down to the width of the, or to the circumference of the foot. <clears throat> this is your, your sock gusset right here. So I, I didn't incorporate the stitch pattern here because there's so many decreases that are happening in order to narrow that gusset down. And so I waited until I got to the circumference of the sock and then I was able to continue my stitch pattern without having to worry about the decreases interrupting the stitch pattern. Um, and also, I mean, maybe I just didn't really want to do all the math in my head. Um, but I like the way that it looks because the racing stripe of stockinette going down the side with this little uh, kind of like... I don't know, it's almost like a, um, a stirrup pant almost that goes down and under your foot. And um, on the bottom of the foot, it's hard to see it, but you see, you know, the difference between the pattern, the stitch pattern, and then that little stripe. And then, like I mentioned again, like that racing stripe going down the side. I really like that. So even though I thought it would be cool to figure out how I could incorporate the stitch pattern in the gusset, I, I'm okay with the fact that I didn't do it that way. Um, because I really like the way that it looks. So, so that's okay. So I did not make that change in the second sock. I just made the change on the heel to add some texture to the heel flap. And then I did not change needle size from my cuff to the body of the sock. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I'm excited to get these finished. There are going to be differences in each sock, but like I mentioned before, in the name of prototyping, I think that there's nothing wrong with that considering they're only going to be on my feet for now. Um, but when I write up the final pattern, it will be consistent. You won't have one sock like this and one sock like something else. Um, but I'm excited about these. And I've actually been sensing a lot of excitement from those of you that have been paying attention on Instagram. So that's really cool. So when the pattern is finalized, I will be doing a little call for test knitters to see um, if anybody would be interested in helping me test the pattern. Um, they're just they're really cute socks. I'm actually really excited to put them on my feet, take a picture and post them so you can see how they look on the foot because they are really kind of a sassy house sock, I guess, if you will. But yeah, I'm really loving them. So that is kind of the progress I'm making on the second sock of my little original design. I don't even know what to call them. I think I'm just for right now going to call them my minky socks since that's the colorway that I'm using. Um, but yeah, so any suggestions that you guys have or anything that I've mentioned, if you have an answer for me, uh, let me know. Just add it to the comments down below or let me know if you're excited about the pattern, if you like it, if you would be interested in test knitting. And go ahead and let me know in the comments or you can actually email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com and let me know. But that's my progress on this project so far. So another... Um, kind of gift knit, I guess you could say, that I have going right now is another hat for my sister-in-law. She actually requested, okay, well, I'm going to go back a little bit here because I knit a hat for her um, quite a while ago, like probably seven, eight years ago. It was when I really first kind of got into knitting and I was knitting hats and kind of upping my game a little bit. 
um, I knit for her a pom-pom hat. And I think that was the last pom-pom hat, honestly, that I knit. So it was a long time ago. Um, it was the Picoline hat, I believe it's called. So here's a picture of the pattern, um, the pattern photo, if you will. So it's a really fun, slouchy pom-pom hat. And I must have made an adjustment to the pattern so that her hat wasn't so slouchy, but I kind of doubt that I did that um, at that point in my knitting career, I guess you could say. I don't I think that might have been a little bit complicated. So maybe I just knit it on smaller needles or tighter because it wasn't as slouchy um, on my sister-in-law. It also may actually be because when she wore it, she rolled the brim. You know, I think that's what it was. When she wore the hat, and you can see it here in this picture, she rolled the brim, whereas the um, lady wearing the hat in the picture for the pattern doesn't have a rolled brim, so it's gonna provide more slouch. That must have been what it was. Needless to say, I made this hat for her and she um, really, really loved it. And she asked me if I still had the pattern for this hat or if I could knit something like this for her in a navy colorway. And so, I got really excited about that request. So for Christmas, one of the gifts that she received was actually a skein of Fiber for the People yarn that was bare. I hadn't dyed it yet. And it was on my new Baby Cakes 100% Pure Baby Alpaca yarn, which I'm going to talk to you guys all about in a minute. Um, but it's a bulky alpaca, 100% pure baby alpaca. Um, I gifted it to her. I said we can dye this together in my Going Out Jeans colorway, which is the colorway that she really, really liked. It's a dark navy. Um, and then I would knit for her a pom-pom hat out of this yarn because this is the same similar type yarn that I used to knit her picoline hat um, originally. So that's what I did. So um, I dyed up the yarn and I started a hat. Now I decided I wanted to do it my uh, an original design for her hat because I'm I've been bitten by this design bug, I guess you could say. So I'm working on that right now. So this is kind of a Christmas gift. It's just an after the fact Christmas gift. Um, and that's kind of what I have going here. And this is knit in my all new Fiber for the People yarn, Baby Cakes, which is the base. It's 100% pure baby alpaca bulky. Um, and it's like, I, it is really beautiful and so soft. If you've been working with wool yarn almost exclusively and have yet to venture into alpaca yarn, um, it's a whole nother experience altogether and it's beautiful. So this is really all I have so far because I just started this yesterday. Um, because she likes to roll the brims of her hats. I wanted to give her a really nice long brim because it would be rolled. So when you roll this, it's a five inch brim unrolled and it's about two and a half inches rolled. Um, that would be correct, right? Because you're halving it when you roll it. So that would be the the depth when it's rolled and it's really, really very beautiful. I love the color on this yarn. Oh my gosh, this is the going out jeans colorway on the yarn. It's really beautiful. So this is her brim. And one thing I will tell you about alpaca, if you are not familiar with knitting with it, it stretches a ton, you know, compared to wool yarn, which also has a stretch in and of itself, wool yarn is stretchy. Alpaca yarn, when you feel alpaca yarn in the skein, it's actually not a very stretchy yarn. But when you knit it into a stretchy fabric, it really, really stretches. It's um, it's very forgiving, I guess you could say. So I like the brim, especially here, to be snug, you know, not overly loose. Because another thing about alpaca yarn is it's really not as resilient as wool. Um, it will stretch and it will stay stretched um, and tend to not kind of regain its shape if it's like over if it's over shaped, I guess, or if it's over stretched, or if it's constantly being put on your head, that constant um, agitation of the fabric will cause it to just kind of stay stretched. And you'll never really have that nice solid shape that you had when you first put it on. And so that's kind of why I like to overcompensate by making the brim of the hat only um, a little bit more snug. So this will actually fit. Why don't I go ahead and put it on so you can see kind of how it will fit. So this is how it is in my hands. You can see it's pretty narrow, but when you put it on, oh, this is really gonna do a number on my hair. So when you put it on, it actually is super, super cozy. So it's, uh, it's a really good fit for an adult head. Um, and with my cable, it's kind of awkward. 
So that would be how it fits on the head. Now this is the brim, this is the circumference of the brim. The rest of the hat actually went up in size quite a bit because I increased 10 stitches to get the shape of the, the regular portion of your head. So that's gonna actually become a little bit more uh, shapely around the head because I don't want it to be, I don't want the hat to be like a watchman's cap that kind of is really snug over the head. I want it to have it some slouch to it and so I wanted to add that little bit of size after the brim was knit but I wanted to make sure that the brim would fit the head nicely considering the fabric that an alpaca yarn can make. And boy it is really warm. Alpaca is so so warm. I'm already like heating up just having this on my head right now so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off adjust the dew here which I don't know what I can do with it quite honestly it's growing like a weed these days that'll have to do so anyway um, that's what I have going on so far so the ribbed brim is finished and I'm working on the stitch pattern right now and I'm actually just doing um, kind of like a herringbone stitch it's really hard to see anything happening right now because I'm only a few rows in but I thought it would be fun to have a really pretty herringbone stitch um, in the hat and then to top it off with a really pretty pom-pom because she wants it to have a pom-pom which I'm super excited about that because I'm loving making pom-poms right now and an alpaca pom-pom that's like luxury pom-pom I mean I don't even know what an alpaca pom-pom would look like because that fiber is so soft and lustrous but it's gonna be gorgeous um, and, and not only am I knitting the head portion of this hat uh, on more stitches. Not only did I increase that number of stitches, I'm also knitting it on a larger needle. So it's going to give the stitch pattern on the main portion of the hat a little bit more loft. <laughs> So that's all I have going for works in progress right now. I have other works in progress, my cardigan, my sweater, my baby blanket. They're all going, they're just really slow right now. So I wanted to share with you guys some things that um, I was more actively engaged in in the very moments, wait, at the current time. <laughs> So I have some fun things to share with you guys for this segment of thanks, it's new, and I want to start with um, a New Year's present I got myself um, because I could not resist, and that is, I'm sure we've all seen these, if you haven't checked these out, you definitely need to, it is a field bag by Fringe Supply Company, and this is in the Tartan Watch Plaid. Uh, tech, uh, pattern, I guess you could say. It is a waxed canvas project bag, and it's amazing. I love these so much. They're pricey. They're a little bit of an investment for a project bag, but they're really a great tool to have when it comes to uh, your project bag collection. They're well made, excellent, you know, quality. Um, they have really thoughtful details. There's some really great pockets on the inside. If you can see here, um, you've got, you know, smaller pockets for needles. You've got bigger pockets for patterns and for various different notions. And then on the pocket, the biggest pocket that holds a pattern, there's actually little rivets um, that you can send yarn through so that it comes out neatly from your project bag if you're working on a color work project or maybe you have multiple projects in there and you want to keep your yarn separated. And then the leather detailing on the handle right here is, is really special. So these bags are really, really great. Like I said, if you haven't or if you're not familiar with the Fringe Supply Company, company field bag that's the little tag right here if you're on Instagram I'm sure you've seen them or if you're watching other podcasters I'm sure you've seen them um, they're just a really great project bag investment uh, to have because they're super sturdy they're super functional I don't know they're just kind of that like little luxury I guess you could say so I did get myself one of these and I'm really excited about that for Christmas and this is um, something I requested for Christmas I received a book called up down all around stitch dictionary and like I mentioned earlier I have been bitten by the design bug let me tell you and I have a couple stitch you know pattern dictionaries if you will in my collection and they're okay but the one thing that was frustrating for me is that if I was knitting something in the round like a sock or a hat and I wanted to do a particular stitch pattern the stitch dictionary I had didn't really tell me how to modify the pattern or what I needed to do to knit it in the round now I know I could come up with that on my own I know it's pretty easy to understand that when you're knitting in the round you're not really ever knitting the wrong side you're always knitting a single side so if it says to knit the wrong side with a set of purl stitches you're simply gonna do the same thing but with knit stitches 
Like, I get that. I guess it was just that I wanted to see if there was something out there that already had that formulated in the stitch pattern. And this is exactly what that is. And that's why it's called Up Down All Around because it gives you a collection of stitch patterns, but it tells you how to knit that particular stitch. And I'll show you an example um, in the book. So for example, some simple stitch patterns here. It shows you how to knit it flat and how to knit it in the round. So you have a flat and an in the round version of that particular pattern. Um, and it makes it really intuitive and user-friendly, takes the guesswork and, or maybe not the guesswork, but the leg work out of taking a stitch pattern and transforming it into an actual piece of, you know, knitwear or design or what have you. And so I was really excited when I received this because it has 150 stitch patterns for, um, you know, bottom up, top down, back and forth, in the round, what have you. And it also breaks it down into like your basic knit and purl stitches to your lace you know, patterns to cables to color work. It gives you patterns to practice them on. It's really kind of the whole enchilada. And something I really love in knitting books is when they are spiral bound, which this is spiral bound. It just makes it seem more like a workbook, more functional and less like, you know, a coffee table book. So I'm really happy with this. So if you're interested in kind of getting into designing patterns or something and you're starting from scratch like I am, this is a really, really great resource because it does lend you that extra hand when it comes to figuring out how to, you know, manipulate stitch patterns to work with a particular stitch design. So as I've mentioned a couple times in this episode, I am hooked on making pom-poms. And when I was making my niece's hat, I wanted to actually make a pom-pom with a pom-pom maker. So I decided I'm going to gather my Joann's coupons and go get some pom-pom makers because they come in various different sizes and the different sizes come in different packages. So I could use a coupon for each package because Joann's is that amazing. So I have now pom-pom makers. Look at these, you guys. I have a whole slew of pom-pom makers in all the different sizes, except for maybe the super ginormous size. Um, but other than that, I have all the little ones and the medium and the big one here. And I love them. Just looking at the pom-pom maker makes me excited. It's it's great. This is the um, size that I'm actually using for, this is the one I use for my brother's striped hat and for um, Lou's little hat, I believe I used this one. I gave her a little bit of a smaller pom-pom. Um, but you guys, I don't know about you, but if you are anything like me, when you first started knitting, you probably picked up this pom-pom maker. So this was the first pom-pom maker I had in my toolbox and I think it's Lion Brand and I, I have nothing against Lion Brand so that's not neither here nor there. It's just I don't like this pom-pom maker and I think there's other pom-pom makers like this from other brands but I just I don't like it. I don't think it's intuitive. I think it's you may as well just use your hand and make a pom-pom. Like I just I never understood what these two little white rings were going to do for me when it came to making a pom-pom. But when I discovered an actual pom-pom maker and how easy it is to make a pom-pom with this, I was hooked. And now when you get the pom-pom maker in the package, the directions on the back of the package are semi-clear, I guess. I mean, you could figure out how to make the pom-pom, um, but I had to look it up on YouTube. <laughs> Maybe that makes me crazy, but I really, I wanted to just watch somebody make a pom-pom. I didn't want to have to read and like work and read and work. I just wanted to watch somebody make a pom-pom um, and then I would follow along and make my own pom-pom. And you guys, there's a million YouTube videos on how to make a pom-pom using a Clover pom-pom maker because that's what this is. This is by Clover. Um, so we, I, I don't need to tag any videos here. Just type in how to make a pom-pom with a Clover pom-pom maker on YouTube and you'll find something. Um, but it's so so easy. I love it so much. Now I haven't made pom-poms with my little teeny tiny pom-pom makers here, but I, I figured out what it is that I really want to do um, with these little pom-pom makers that doesn't really rely on me having to knit a pom-pom hat. And that is, I would like to make a pom-pom mobile for my little one um, to hang over his crib. So these will all come in handy because the mobile, and I'm sure that a million people have done this already in the past, um, but I'll just have various different sized pom-poms on the mobile. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And it's done and it's adorable. And that's 
I'm actually really excited about that. And I'm worried a little bit too that it's going to be like a slippery slope to making like pom-pom garlands to hang around the house. And I'm going to be like the scarf lady on Sarah and Duck who knits a bunch and she has all this yarn and knitting paraphernalia all around her little house. Um, but that might happen and that might concern my husband. So I have to be careful. But you guys, if you haven't gotten a clover pom-pom maker and started making pom-poms, be careful because it could become a new addiction. So anyway, these are new and I'm really excited to use them for my son, my future littlest one um, for his mobile that's gonna hang over his crib. And then also of course to make all the pom-poms for all the pom-pom hats that are in my future that I know. So that's really exciting. So a clover pom-pom maker. If you don't have one, at least this size, um, if you need to get one pom-pom maker and have it in your collection, have it be this one because it's the one that makes the most universal size pom-poms. And then maybe um, this one if you're gonna knit pom-pom hats for smaller people. But I think the blue, yeah, these two, these are the, the two that you definitely need for, for hats, I guess you could say. Or maybe if you're making slippers with pom-poms on them, you'll want them for that. So my pom-pom makers, I'm super excited about that. Also, while I was at Joann's, I picked up a couple of balls of Lily Sugar and Cream, or I should say a few, balls of Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. This is just basic 100% cotton yarn. If you guys have made any kind of washcloths or baby accessories, towels, what have you, you're probably familiar with this. Um, it's really popular for crocheting, you know, these types of things. Um, in a previous episode, I have my good friend in California show you how to make a little face scrubby using crochet and she uses this yarn. It's just, it's great universal cotton yarn and it's a great price too. So I got these, actually my mom and I both got these colors because on Pinterest, there is a knitting pattern that's put out by Michaels for at your service dish towels. They are the type of dish towel that hangs over the oven handle um, and they're adorable. And the colors are so cute. And so I saw that and I thought, that's perfect. I would love to have something like that in my kitchen just as an accent piece, <laughs> which is silly, um, but that I've made. And it's functional and it's kind of that domestic like knitting that's really got me right now. And so I picked up the colors that it calls for in the pattern and I do plan on working up a couple of those dish towels um, when, I, when I pop something else off the needles, probably when Jessica's hat is finished and my little slipper sock patterns are finished and done, I'll pop one of these on the needles and have this going as a fast domestic project, if you will. But anyway, it's called the At Your Service Tea Time Dish Cloth, I believe, something like that, At Your Service Dish Hanging Dish Towel. Really cute, really easy, um, super beginner pattern. I mean, whether you're a beginner or not, you just want something easy to knit, this is definitely you know one for that. You can do whatever colors you want, but I loved the colors in the picture so much that I decided I wanted to get those. Um, so, that is definitely something I'm interested in knitting soon. And then also I know I'm going to have a bunch of this left over. I do plan on knitting some baby washcloths. So I'll have something to do with the remnants of this. But otherwise, these are new. All right, guys, we are having a Fiber for the People shop update on Tuesday, January 9th, which is tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I want to share with you guys some of the yarny goodness that's going to be in that shop update. Plus, I have a few announcements regarding the shop that I want to share with you guys as well, just to keep you informed. The first is that I am now offering a cake winding service in the shop. So when you purchase yarn, you will have an option to purchase a cake winding service for however many many skeins of yarn that you would like me to cake when you purchase them. Um, and what you would do is you would find the item in the shop that says cake winding service and you would add however many of those services you would like um, for your orders. So if you order four skeins of yarn and you want all four skeins of yarn caked up, you would add four cake winding services to your cart and then you would check out just like normal. So that is an offer that is going to be in the shop if you would like to have your yarn caked before it even gets sent to you, it's available to you. Another thing that I am now offering in the shop, I mentioned it on the last episode, are bulk custom orders or custom bulk orders. Let's say you want to buy a quantity of yarn for a larger project in all one colorway, all one base. You can now do that as a custom order. So if you go to the website, up at the top, you click on the bulk 
orders tab and that'll take you to the page where I lay out all of the um, instructions on how to go about doing a custom bulk order. It's pretty basic, but it's all there for you. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, it is a minimum of four skeins in one colorway and one yarn base. So the purpose of that is just if you're trying to knit a larger project and you want to make sure that you can get the colorway that you're looking for in a similar dye batch, um, that's kind of the way to go with that. So that is an option for you. You can use coupon codes when you do that. Um, it's all done through PayPal invoicing as opposed to the checkout process in the shop, um, but all of that is laid out for you there. So definitely head over to the website if that sounds like something that's interesting to you um, or something that you might want to take advantage of and you can read all about it there. It's all very clear and um, all the details are on the website for you there. So you definitely want to check that out if that is of interest to you. Also, don't forget to sign up for the Fiber for the People yarn newsletter. That way you can keep up to date on all of the fibery goodness that's coming to the shop in each given update and also be on top of promotions that I send out for newsletter subscribers only. All right, so like I said, the shop update is tomorrow, Tuesday, January 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the yarny goodness that's gonna be in the shop. The first is a new colorway and this actually is going to cap off my um, new kind of colorway binging that I've been doing because I've been trying to develop a winter collection, if you will. And so I've been doing lots of new colorways. Um, in the next upcoming update, there will be lots of returning colorways that you've seen in the past. Um, and from there on out, you'll see lots of returning colorways cycling back through the shop with always some new colorways being added to the menu from time to time. But that's kind of something to look forward to in future updates. But this last update um, and or first update of the new year is going to kind of culminate the winter collection of colorways. So these are all new uh, colorways to the shop. So the first one, and I'm really excited to share this with you guys, and they aren't labeled because I wanted you to see the whole skein. This is called Attic Treasure. So I'm showing it to you here on my workhorse base. And I am in love with this colorway. Gosh, you know what? I feel like that's the first thing that I say every time I put a colorway up, but it's beautiful. I didn't know what I was gonna call this until well after it was finished and skeined, but Attic Treasure came to mind because all of the colorways actually in this update's collection have kind of an antique dusty vibe to them that I really love. And so I thought that's kind of a great theme for this update is, you know, old um, kind of vintagey, dusty treasure colors. I don't know. And so this reminded me of opening up some kind of a, a trunk in an attic of an old house and finding something beautiful and mysterious and just you know, a treasure. And it would have a patina of sorts, which is kind of where I'm seeing this gold coming through. And maybe the colors of the item from, you know, it's early days, which is that, you know, beautiful pinks and purples coming through here. Maybe those are shining through and then you have some age related speckles going on. I mean, I could go on. I just feel like with the name Attic Treasure, this colorway really tells a story. So this is the Workhorse base. It will be available on Workhorse, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. It'll also be available on this base here, which is Whist. For the time being, Whist is actually a 100% superwash merino four ply fingering weight yarn, but I am actually going to be changing the Whist base to a 100% merino non superwash four ply fingering yarn. Um, I want to have a fingering base that is on a pure wool and not a super wash, just to kind of, for those of you that would prefer something that's not super washed, that's pretty much all. That's the only reason why I'm doing that. So this is the Whist base. This is the Workhorse base. And then it will also be featured on my Taylor's favorite, which is an 80-20 two-ply fingering base, which I'm showing here. It's beautiful. This base is lovely, and it's one of my favorites because of its two-ply twist, which you can see. It's just gorgeous. And the way that colorways play out on this in comparison to um, the other bases, it's a, it's a lot of fun to see that variation. So this is called Attic Treasure, and it will be available on these three bases in the shop tomorrow. This next colorway is also inspired by that uh, vintage antique kind of feel that you would get by when discovering new treasures in an attic. And this is called Patina. And 
you'll understand why it's called patina in just a moment. If you see things that have a copper in them or an iron in them that have aged, they tend to develop this bluish tinge, which is, you know, the patina of age. And this just kind of calls that out to me. When I was thinking about the theme and naming all of these colorways, um, I wanted to stick to that and I felt like, yeah, that's what this is. If you look at something that has rusted or, you know, developed a patina over time, these are kind of some of the things that you might see. So this is called patina and this is on my supple single ply base and it's just a beautiful extra fine merino. So it's a 19 and a half micron, which is a super fine um, merino fiber. Um, this is an excellent yarn for shawls for lighter wearing things. You don't want to knit this into socks or heavy wearing garments because it does have a tendency to pill because of how fine the fiber is, but it is so scrumptious, so beautiful and luxurious. Um, and the colorway is really beautiful on this yarn base and those black speckles just have me like, what? Beautiful. Okay, so this is Patina and it is on singles here. I also have it on my Vigor base, which is 100% New Zealand, Superwash New Zealand Polworth. Oh gosh, I am so excited about this base, you guys. I can't even tell. It's like one of my new, um, let's see. It's one of my new favorite yarn bases in the shop right now. The it, It's such a beautiful canvas for any dye job, really. It's gorgeous. So here it is on the Vigor DK base beautiful plump yarn. Oh, so gorgeous. You can see that teal patina coming through right here. I'm also going to have it on my workhorse base. So here it is on workhorse. And then I will also have it, and this is again 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And then I will Finally, last but not least, I will have it on my whist base. And so here it is on the whist base. It's a little bit more delicate on this base, which is really beautiful. And that is patina, and these will be available in the shop in tomorrow's update. So we have whist, workhorse, vigor, let's see if I can get all this together, and supple which is the singles so that is patina this next colorway is something special i um it's a it's actually really cool to me how when that theme popped into my head um how all of these kind of just fell in line really um and so this one this colorway is really special to me this is called forgotten watercolor because the first time I saw all these colors together in the yarn when it was soaking, there were so many different um, ideas that came to mind of what I would call this, but it wasn't until it was skeined up and actually it wasn't until I was looking at it in a photograph that the name came to me. So this is called Forgotten Watercolor. And I called it that because it definitely has these watercolor nuances to it, but they're so muted and beautiful that it kind of reminds me of a watercolor painting that has probably sat, you know, collecting dust, aging somewhere. And this is what you would see with that layer of dust and age kind of covering the, the surface of the canvas or the glass or what have you. And so that's what came to mind when I finally saw this in the photograph, uh, skeined up like this, was forgotten watercolor. And I love this so much. This is on my wisp base right here. Um, it's also going to be on my workhorse base, which I just added up at the top. And it's very consistent across the bases in this particular colorway. So these two are gorgeous. The Vigor base, like I mentioned, is really becoming one of my favorites. And it shows off this colorway just beautifully. So this is Vigor, 100% Superwash New Zealand Polworth DK. I mean, just look at that. Like, can't you just imagine that if this were knit up into a fabric, some kind of a, of a watercolor image would come through? It, it, maybe I'm like being too romantic about it, but it's really beautiful. So this is um, Forgotten Watercolor. And even though this is part of a winter collection, I am definitely going to be cycling this back through the shop frequently because I love it so much and I know that you guys will as well. And it is also available on my Supple Single Ply Base, which is so beautiful but just the stories that each of the colorways tell alone plus the separate stories that they tell on each of the bases of yarn is really very special so this is forgotten watercolor and it will be in the shop on those four bases tomorrow okay so staying true to the whole you know 
forgotten, lost, dusty, antique colorway collection. I have another one called Dust Bunny. Now, I'm not 100% sure what it is that brought Dust Bunny to mind, but I have a couple of ideas. So I'm going to show you the colorway first, and then I'll tell you where I think that name come from, where I think that name came from. So here is Dust Bunny. Um, Dust Bunny is going to be on four different bases. So this is it on the Wist base, the 100% Superwash Merino four ply fingering. Now, the picture, the image that you're seeing on the screen is really very bright, and and this colorway is really very bright. But I don't think what's being translated very well is that it does have these like shades of gray to it. There's like a grayish, dusty undertone that the colorway has, and I think that in combination with these black speckles and then the pink, a dust bunny came to mind because the dusty gray undertones and the black speckles reminded me of kind of the things that you sweep up in a dust bunny. When you're dusting underneath a cabinet that hasn't been dusted under for a while, you pull out some of these like grayish, uh, multicolored little pockets of cotton and dust and what have you and there's speckles of various different colors in there and that might seem kind of gross but it's not I think it was kind of like an interesting inspiration and then the pink is more of a literal you know bunny connection so I don't know I guess like I was reaching when I thought but to be completely honest it was just something that came to me like pretty quickly I was like dust bunny this looks like dust bunny I have been asked how this color compares to a regular colorway that I feature in the shop called granny's tea dress um because in the Instagram photos of this colorway, there were similarities to Granny's tea dress. And I think that's a really good question to ask. Um, but when you see this colorway in person, if you were to hold it up next to a, a color a version of Granny's tea dress. So I'll hold this up here. I'm going to try and hold it up. So here is Dust Bunny. And then I'm going to pop up a picture of Granny's tea dress. Um, and you can see, and I'll even do a side by side of the two of them. But there's similarity in that if you were to try to do like a fade with these two colors it would probably look really pretty but there's definite differences so these two colorways are definitely different this has no purple um there's what looks to be a green undertone but to be honest it's more of a kind of a straw color and then of course you have the black speckles and this like bubblegum pink color that's you know very subtle but it's definitely a different pink than is what's in granny's tea dress so Kind of an interesting comparison but this is on the wist base and i will also have it on the workhorse base here and then i will have it on my dk base which is the 100 percent superwash new zealand paul worth so that's that here and I apologize, I mentioned I was going to have this on four bases, and I am going to have it on four bases, but the one I grabbed was not the single ply base, it was another whist base on accident, because it's kind of dark where I have all of my yarn stored right now. But it will also be available on the single ply base, and that base is beautiful as well. So that is Dust Bunny across four bases, and I am showing you three right now. But this is my speckled and variegated collection. We have um, Forgotten Watercolor, Patina, um, Attic Treasure, and Dust Bunny. A really fun culminating winter collection that I'm really excited to share with you guys. Last but not least, when it comes to things that are coming to the shop on Tuesday, I want to share with you guys a new yarn base that I have just gotten in and some new colors that I want to share with you guys as well. So the new yarn base, I've already mentioned it to you when I was showing you my sister-in-law's hat that I'm working on, is a 100% pure baby alpaca bulky base. Um, it's gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and just show it to you on one of the colorways that I've dyed. I decided my introduction of this base was going to be on pastel solids because pastels are soft. Um, and I plan on dyeing all of the solids in the shop on my heavier bases only, unless it's a special request for a bulk custom order, I would dye it on whatever base that you want. But the colorway, the solids that I put into the shop will only be on the worsted to bulky bases. And so I wanted to do a soft colorway on such beautiful soft yarn for now as the introduction to this yarn. So this is my 100% pure baby alpaca bulky and it is amazing it is called baby cakes that's the name of the yarn base 
you guys, it's so beautiful. I don't know if you can see that gorgeous halo and just how soft and scrumptious this yarn is, but I mean, oh, it's so soft. I'm telling you, you could knit a pair of pajamas out of this and it would be just so soft to sleep in. It's beautiful. It's perfect for knitting little baby items. Um, one thing that's really special about alpaca, amongst many other things that's really special about alpaca, is it is um, a, an animal that comes from the canalid family, and these are non-lanolin producing animals. So their wool doesn't, pr they don't produce any lanolin in their wool, which is what makes them a hyp hypoallergenic fiber. Um, when people are allergic to wool, they're allergic to the lanolin in the wool. Um, this doesn't have any of that. So that's what makes this a really great fiber to use for baby knits because you're not gonna have to worry too much about that next to skin contact because there's no you know, allergen in there such as lanolin. So that's kind of nice, um, but it's so soft regardless. It's just almost like a, it's almost like Play-Doh. <laughs> it's just so juicy. So this is my first pastel color and this is going to be called Glass. It's so, it's a kind of an aqua color. I'm actually knitting a baby blanket right now um, and I have it with me. <laughs> and the blanket is knit in this yarn, which is um, Softy Baby by Bernat. And I loved this color so much. And so when I was formulating this color, I was inspired by this color. Now this one has more green to it, um, kind of like that milk glass green color. And I love that. Um, it's just, it's just such a beautiful, fun color. So this is called glass. I also will have it on this colorway as well, which is called olive. And the olive color is pretty because it has these like subtle and this is I didn't add this. This is just how the dye was translated on the fiber, but it has like these subtle pink undertones. And I mean, when I say pink, it's like very, very pale. It's almost like fleshy colored. Maybe that kind of sounds gross, but this is olive. It was some really fun, subtle, pinky peach undertones in there. Beautiful pastel. I'm also going to have it on herb. So this is herb, just an herbal green color. Real vegetal and natural, but still pastel at the same time. And then I'm also gonna have it on honeydew just an even brighter kind of yellowy green. So this is honeydew. And then we'll have it on straw. Fun, bright, cheery, yellow pastel. And then last but not least, grapefruit. <laughs> wow, okay, so this is way more pink. I'm gonna pull this away a little bit because it is not as pink as what you're seeing it. Um, I don't know if I can compare it. Bring it a little closer. Yeah, no. Okay, so the way that this color is translating on the camera is really not a good, it's not a very accurate depiction of this color. This, if you've uh, watched the last few episodes, you've seen the update where I introduced the colorway Piglet, which is a pink like a true pink and it looks just like this. But this, the way you're seeing it now, is not the way it looks in real life, which is interesting. So if you can imagine a uh, ruby red grapefruit, a pastel version of that color, there's a lot more um, orange in it than what you're seeing on the screen right now. So this, it's almost like this, the camera is picking up only the pink, but what's really happening here that I'm seeing with my own eyes is definitely more of an orange uh, grapefruit color. So definitely wait until you see it on the shop. I think you'll know what I mean or check it out on Instagram. Um, here's a picture that I posted on Instagram of all the colorways together so you can kind of get a better idea of what this color looks like there because it's just way, way lighter here than there, but that's grapefruit. So all of the colors together, like you just saw in that picture, um, are so beautiful, so kind of cheery and bright, even though they're pastels. And I'm really excited to share them with you guys. So here they are, our collection of pastels uh, on the Baby Cakes 100% non-superwash pure baby alpaca. And I love it so much. It's really... It's really just something special. Just, I, oh, just putting it next to my face, all of these yarns. I'm gonna have myself a moment. So yeah, it's like a bouquet of soft, squishy goodness. 
All right, you guys, that is it. That is, that is everything coming to the shop for tomorrow's update, Tuesday, January 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be there and don't forget, use your Wool Needles Hands coupon for being a Wool Needles Hands viewer and subscriber. It is W-N-H-L-O-V-E in all caps and you get 10% off your entire order. So don't forget to do that. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Check out the new special bulk orders option. Check out the yarn caking option. It is available to you. But just go over and check out some of that good yummy yarn that's going to be in the shop update tomorrow. Guys, it is time for me to go. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today, talking about all the knitty and fibery topics, and just, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Channel. It means so much to me. Thank you so much for everybody who's been subscribing. We are, like I said, almost to 40... 4,300 subscribers, something like that. It's it's really mind-blowing, and I thank you so much. This has become such an important part of my life, and really, you guys make it all go around for being here to support it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your continued support. Thank you to all of those new viewers and subscribers. There are quite a few of you. I've heard from lots of you, and I... I'm so thankful for you. So I, I can't express it enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, happy new year. Let's make this a really great new year for crafting and knitting and making and all the things that we love. So cheers to that. And until episode 20 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast, you guys, happy knitting, happy whatever it is that you're doing, and I will see you next time. Bye.